Volcano climate shock. The heat source under Antarctica could be melting the giant ice caps. Researchers have discovered volcanic heat source under major Antarctic glaciers. The surprising find plays critical role in the movement and the melting of Pine Island glaciers. Now what would happen if Antarctica's dormant ice-covered volcanoes wake up? One of these is Mount Erebus. Mount Erebus glows across the Ross ice shelf. The, the area was first seen by the 1840 1841 British expedition led by James Clark Ross after they forced their way through the pack ice crossed the Ross Sea and sighted Mount Erebus and Mount Terror named after the expedition's ships the ice shelf was first called the South Polar Barrier and after sailing eastward along it for 200 miles the expedition withdrew until the following Antarctic summer season Volcano and volcanic heat beneath the Pine Island Glacier in Antarctica could be exacerbating the melting ice sheets according to a shocking climate study. Sebastian Kelly of Express UK, the team of international scientists discovered a source of intense volcanic heat beneath Antarctica's fastest melting ice sheet. There are about 91 volcanoes so far discovered in Antarctica. 91. Professor Karen Haywood of the University of East Anglia took part in a 2014 expedition to the icy continent of Antarctica. She said the discovery is vital towards understanding why the ice caps are melting there. She said the discovery of volcanoes be beneath the Antarctic ice sheet means that there is an additional source of heat to melt the ice, lubricate its passage towards the sea, and add to the melting from warm ocean waters. Quote, it will be important to include this in our efforts to estimate whether the Antarctic ice sheet might become unstable and further increase sea level rise. Lead research chemical oceanographer Professor Bryce Luce of the University of Rhode Island discovered trace amounts of volcanic gases in the waters around the ice cap during their expedition these volcanic gases, mainly helium-3, pointed towards the source of volcanic activity many kilometers below the surface of the ice. These startling findings were published in the latest edition of Nature Communications, and the title of that article was Evidence of an Active Volcano Heat Source Beneath the Pine Island Glacier. Professor Liu said, we were looking to better understand the role of the ocean in melting the ice shelf. I was sampling the water for five different noble gases, including helium and xenon. I used these noble gases to trace ice melt as well as heat transport. Helium-3, the gas that indicates volcanism, is one of the suit of gases that we obtain from this tracing method. Pine Island Glacier is part of the West Antarctic Ice Sheet which covers Antarctica in the Western Hemisphere. As we know, that's in the Ring of Fire as well. In 2017, geologists from Edinburgh University in Scotland discovered almost 100 volcanoes beneath the ice sheet. The whole system sits on the so-called Rift System which covers a stretch of 2,175 miles that's 3,500 kilometers from the Ross ice, sheaf, sheet, ice shelf to the Antarctic Peninsula. Professor Liu said, this newly discovered source of heat was found below the fastest moving and the fastest melting glacier in Antarctica. In 2014, Pine, Pine Island Glacier was estimated to account for about 25% of the total ice cap loss of Antarctica. But there are no direct signs the volcanism is directly linked to the melting ice. Instead, Professor Luce agrees the bulk of evidence still points towards man-made climate change as the main culprit. He says, quote, climate change is causing the bulk of glacial melt that we observe, and this newly discovered source of heat is having as yet 
undetermined effect because we do not know how this heat is distributed between beneath the ice sheet. And according to NASA, satellite data collected since 2002 shows both the Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets have been losing mass. The agency, NASA, further stressed the melting ice has accelerated since 2009. And further satellite observations show the average global sea level has risen by nearly 70 inches in the past 100 years. And now what if Antarctica's dormant ice-covered volcanoes all wake up? That would be bad news, of course, because there's about 100 volcanoes in Antarctica. It's a very vasty icy wasteland covered by the world's largest ice sheets. This ice sheet contains about 90% of fresh water on the planet. It acts as a massive heat sink and its melt water drives the world's oceanic circulation. Its existence is therefore a fundamental part of Earth's climate. Less well known is that Antarctica is also host to several active volcanoes, as we said, a, a huge part of the volcanic province which extends for thousands of kilometers, as with 3,500 kilometers along, along the western edge of the continent. Although the volcanic province has been known and studied for decades, about 100 new volcanoes were recently discovered beneath the ice by scientists using satellite data and ice-penetrating radar to search for hidden peaks. These sub-ice volcanoes may be dormant. What would happen, though, if Antarctica's volcanoes awoke? We can get an idea by looking into the past. One of Antarctica's volcanoes, Mount Takahi, is found close to the remote center of the West Antarctic Ice Sheet, and in a new study, scientists implicate Takahi in a series of eruption rich in ozone-consuming halogens that occurred about 18,000 years ago. These eruptions, they claim, triggered an ancient ozone hole, warmed the southern hemisphere, which caused glaciers to melt, and helped bring the last ice age to a close. And this is a NASA image of Mount Tahake in, uh, new, uh, in the uh, Antarctica. It grew over hundreds of thousands of years, and its eight kilometer wide caldera now towers above the ice sheet. This is the caldera we're looking at. This sort of environmental impact is unusual. For it to happen again would require a series of eruptions similarly enriched in halogens from one or more volcanoes that are currently exposed above the ice. Such a scenario is unlikely, though, as Mount Takahi study shows, not impossible. More likely is that one or more of the many subglacial volcanoes, some of which are known to be active, will erupt at some unknown time in the future. Eruptions, though, do take place below the ice. Because of the enormous thickness of overlying ice, it's unlikely that volcano gases would make it into the atmosphere. So an eruption would not have an impact like that postulated for Takake, Takake which is the caldera having a, it's being exposed above the ice. However, the volcanoes would melt huge caverns in the base of ice and create enormous quantities of meltwater. Because the West Antarctic ice sheet is wet rather than frozen to its bed, Imagine an ice cube on a kitchen worktop. The meltwater would act as a lubricant and could cause the overlying ice to slip and move more rapidly. These volcanoes can also stabilize the ice, however, as they give it something to grip on onto. And imagine that same ice cube snagging onto a lump-shaped object. In any case, the volume of water that would be generated by even a large volcano is a pinprick compared with the volume of overlying ice. So a single eruption would not have much effect on the ice flow. What would make a big difference is if several volcanoes erupt close to or beneath any of the Western Antarctica prominent ice streams. Ice streams are rivers of ice that flow much faster than their surroundings. They are the zones which most uh, of the ice in Antarctica is delivering to the ocean and therefore fluctuations in their speed can affect the sea level. If the additional lubricant provided by multiple volcanoes erupting was channeled beneath the ice streams, 
the subsequent rapid flow may dump unusual amounts of West Antarctica's thick interior ice into the ocean, causing sea levels to rise. Under ice volcanoes are probably what triggered rapid flow of ancient ice streams into the Ross Ice Shelf, Antarctica's largest ice shelf. Something similar might have occurred about 2,000 years ago with a small volcano in the Hudson Mountains that lie be underneath the West Antarctic ice sheet, and if it erupted again today, it could cause a nearby Pine Island glacier to speed up. The volcano ice melt feedback loop. Most dramatically of all, a large series of eruptions could destabilize many more subglacial volcanoes. As volcanoes cool and crystallize, their magma chambers become pressurized and all that prevents the volcanic gases from escaping violently, violently into an eruption and is weighing of the weight of overlying rock, or in this case, several kilometers of ice. As that ice becomes much thinner, the pressure reduction may trigger volcanic eruptions. More eruptions and ice melting would mean even more meltwater being channeled under the ice streams. Potentially, a runaway effect may take place with the thinning ice triggering more and more eruptions. Something similar occurred in Iceland, which saw an increase in volcanic eruptions when glaciers began to recede at the end of the last ice age. So it seems the greatest threat from Antarctica's many volcanoes will be if several erupt within a few decades of each other. If those volcanoes have already grown above the ice and their gases were rich in halogens, then enhanced warming and rapid glaciation, deglaciation may result. But eruptions probably need to take place repeatedly over many tens to hundreds of years to have a climatic impact. More likely is the generation of large quantities of meltwater during subglacial eruptions that might lubricate West Antarctica's ice streams. The eruption of even a single volcano situated strategically close to any of Antarctica's ice streams can cause significant amounts of ice to be swept into the sea. The resulting thinning of the ice, inland ice, is also likely to trigger further subglacial eruptions, generating meltwater over a wider area and potentially causing a runaway effect on ice flow. Thank you.